Hey, Beck. Hey, up. Guess where he is in the bath. What? Why is he in the bath? You know, let me give him a ring now. I've been out here, just waiting for him. He looks, he looks fresh out the bath, doesn't he? Pete was just giving us a lowdown of his best moments. He was saying it was the um, sign on first one, like went that feeling when they all started to turn up. I'm thinking actually, it, that what that was the thing that really made it real, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just the energy in the room and uh, people checking each other out, but also checking, <laughs> seeing the whole structure of how we got it organised, and they knew that we had our shit together, sort of. <laughs> and it just, it was a, a real special coming together, wasn't it? So. Yeah, good cow. Oh, everybody's videos were great on the one that was on the go, especially because I was at home and not seeing any of it. So every time something came up, even like those, like the dot watcher photos and they had like the dot watchers saying, ooh, look at all these strange bikes. And it had all of like the, a lip to go and, mm. and the, they were all taking like it's like train spotting they were doing train spotting with the weird bikes on it that was ace yeah remember where we met you toby uh in scotland and you, you pulled in and i said oh, you my cup of tea and you were like yeah go on oh, uh, no, you can't. just before <laughs> fort william yeah just right there <laughs> well we'd spent the night in that car park and uh, it was this night where rupert hooked up with us so we were myself thomas lee and geordie and then rupert turned up so there's five of us in the welsh embassy and we had the generator running outside and we had uh, geordie editing his film in one corner thomas was in the other corner editing his pictures and then rupert was in the other corner end, end of the table editing his pictures and lee was sat in the front and i was just sort of stood there watching him and it's so cool because it really did feel like we were like the center of the universe at that point everything was happening there and you know getting disseminated out to the people back home who were the few people that were <laughs> following the central know, hub that was a hell of a thing pulling that party together last minute as well wasn't it last yeah. minute we planned it for months what are you on about <laughs> it's like organizing the wedding in the bay <laughs> tell you what the highlight that to massive highlight of the whole race Ed salad <laughs> <laughs> the bastard salad of a deranged man mm, right. yeah. it's, it's special. it's just like half tomatoes <laughs> in a bowl of olive oil with some uh, garlic just dropped on top of it we spent about three hours making it and uh, I remember who was it um, was it you Emma someone was coming up to me saying what the hell no it was a uh, it was, I'm sure it's Ryan's girlfriend, Nikki. She was coming up, she goes, what the hell is that? I said, like, don't ask. He made it. Apparently it's going to be lovely. We just said, that's when we didn't even take it up to the party. We just didn't be in my house because like, no one's going to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. I didn't see that. No. Right, okay, so that's us rabbiting on about our thoughts and uh, memories and stuff that made us laugh about the race. So over to you. Uh, I'm not sure I've got a funniest moment or a best moment, but I've got an enduring moment that will stay with me. Uh, day three between uh, Fort William and Inverary, it was fucking pissing it down. Um, I got so wet and so cold. Cold as ever been on a bike, hundred um, percent. I got to Inverary, I was shaking like a like well like was it a wet dog this hour? I don't know something like that. I was shaking. Um, I went for lunch with David Sherrington. I had fucking soup everywhere because I couldn't keep my fucking arms still. Um, uh, I left the, the pub still shaking, still raining. Went to the corner shop, got a newspaper to try and stick down the top to make it warm. Obviously, it didn't work. Um, there were no other shops, I thought, and I was like, right, fuck it, I have to go. Uh, and then I saw over the road Inverary Woolen Mill. So I dashed across there. Some old woman comes across. I'm like, Merino, and she takes me across and she sees my scruffy face drop because it's obviously mega expensive. Um, and then she says, we've got a sale rack. I'm like, yes, do that. So sale rack, got myself a, a delightful, I would call it gold um, sweatshirt, a lovely, lovely fit. And to go with that, a sort of Alan Titchmask-esque red gilet, uh, which went over the top. The color combinations were perfect. The warmth was superb. Um, and I biffed all my like expensive cycling kit in the bag and wore that for the next few days. 
um, I've still got the golden jumper, and it's oh, actually I've shrunk it so I can't wear it anymore. But my missus wears it and she likes it. So yeah, so yeah, that was my Pan Catholic 2019 sort of best memory. Well, it wasn't the best. It was obviously shite, but it was it was a memory I have of it. Hello there, Pan Celtic fellows. It's fourteen and fifteen, or fifteen and fourteen. I don't know. I'm fifteen. He's four. I'm I'm the other one. Uh, it's Duncan and Guy here at Glastonbury Tor, which you'll visit maybe next year sometime. Uh, memories of uh, Pan Celtic 2019. Uh, a, lo- a lot of friendship, a lot of love uh, amongst the competitors. So it was really unique, um, especially in the ferries when we all just had a time out. We're all absolutely knackered, and it's lovely to see each other. I loved uh, Pete's Celtic Guide to the Race, which I thought was unique. Um, and the scenery was amazing. And now over to him. Uh, I just like the Druid stuff. <laughs> um, and can't wait to be back next year. And uh, also hoping for a Guinness on the boat. Yeah, okay. See you soon. Stay well. So the Pan Celtic Race 2019. Um, such an amazing journey. With so many fond memories. But the highlight for me was the kindness of strangers that I encountered when I got to Wales and was really running out of steam Um, from the lady who kept her shop open for me um, because she knew I was coming up the road and then offered me a room at her house so I could get some rest. Um, I regretted declining that offer um, to a dot watcher who went out of his way to help me find some accommodation um, because I had no phone reception. and um, an older lady at a B&B in Dalgechlai who waited up for me drinking tea till 2am because she was concerned for my welfare. Um, without those people, I wouldn't have made it to the finish line in Clendidno. So to them, I'd like to say, um, Diolch an Fawr. So my, uh, my memory of the race has got to be... Uh riding up through the Galloway Forest um, about 11 o'clock at night, half 11, in the pouring rain, can barely see in front of my face, freezing cold, soaking wet, thinking there's a, there's a campsite just on the, on the descent. And uh, they've got a nice laundry room there, which is a perfect place to sleep for the night. So I, I get there, freezing cold, jump into the, uh, in the shower with all, all my clothes on, uh, just to try and, try and warm up a bit. Um, Finally warm up, get dried off, go around to the, the laundry room, which uh, turns out to be a cupboard. So no, no chance of sleeping in there. Um, and as I come out of there, I bump into another camper who says there's a, like a communal hut around the other side. Um, so I end up sleeping in there for the night, which was really nice, somewhere to dry my clothes and everything. Um, following morning, um, get up, go around to the, to the toilet block, um, see another, another bike outside unmistakable got to be another another racer um go inside and see someone slumped in a chair not quite sure if they're still alive or not um turns out to be john stainsby uh, so i check for a pulse make sure he's alive uh, let him let him come round, and then uh, we set off uh for the next next 30 miles or so in search of the uh the ferry to get across to ireland here we are on celtic lands it is uh, Bibracte, Le Mont Beuvray. It is the land of my family. La Pan Celtic Race, a very strong moment in my life. Um, it was like a big washing machine for my body. But it was a very, very good moment of poetry for my brain. And uh, it is the reason why this. Uh, first edition was so nice moment the strongest moment I think was uh, at the CP2 uh, I arrived in the middle of the night and uh, Matt Ryan was waiting for me and he prepared me uh, something to eat and a cup of tea it was on my birthday I think it uh, will be the, the one of the most beautiful birthday of my life Hi, my name's Lee and my favourite memory from last year's Pan Celtic race is actually chasing down the guy who got me into ultra cycling in the first place and one of the organisers of of the race. I first met Toby in a car park in the rain for the Fred Witten about six years ago and we didn't actually meet again until 
he told me about this race that he was organising. So there's a bit of background. So I spent the whole second day chasing him down, trying to close this gap as you do, checking the tracker, slowly getting closer and closer and eventually caught him on the uh, coastal road to Apple Cross. And I filmed the uh, reaction when I went by screaming and shouting at him. <laughs> The uh, the video still makes me laugh to this day, just seeing his face and the uh, the shock that he gets. So yeah, that's my favourite memory from last year's race. On the second evening, me and Matt were riding together at the time. It was getting a bit late. We'd run out of food, feeling a bit hungry, and um, we rolled into Pool U, and there was a pub there. They just stopped serving food, so grabbed a couple of cans of Coke, a couple of packs of crisps. That's all we got. And then raced over the hill into Gerlock, managed to get into a shop five minutes before it closed, buzzing. Then stopped getting eaten alive by midges, trying to find somewhere to get inside. Spoke to a policeman and he uh, gave us uh, the garage for the night. So, yeah, day two, he said, let us into the garage where some they store stuff. Um, and he actually let a guy sleep there, he said, during the winter to keep him off from his tent. So that was pretty cool, um, but we had to be out by six in the morning because Princess Anne was doing a royal visit. So at the checkpoint in Glendala, the riders from the long route were starting to overtake the riders from the short route. I had made it there before all of the riders from the long route. Chris Piblado came waltzing into the hostel with his soft serve ice cream cone in hand but then kept going on. I decided to take a rest day. Other riders showed up there. A bunch of us stayed in the hostel that night. Wow, the smell of that room was just horrific. I left the next morning and the whispers in the Wicklow Mountains just pushed me along. I got down to the ferry, enjoyed a beautiful sunny day on the beach. The other riders started to show up and we all got on the ferry. There were a few from the long route, a few from the short route. We shared a couple of beers together, ate some good food, and then just passed out sleeping. Uh, Neil and Adam curled up together and had a little snooze. And yeah, the friendships that were made and really felt part of the Pan Celtic clan. What a good time. <laughs> there is no. <laughs> No question, the funniest memory has to be day seven, overnight into day eight, riding with Tony Clare through the night, pushing for the ferry at Rosslair. We came down through a village and passed this guy stumbling into his car. We flew through and out the other side and I just turned to Tony and went, did you see that? He said, well, what did you see? And I said very quietly, I saw Elvis. He just nodded. And we both fell into hysterics. <laughs> this guy was an Elvis impersonator in full sequence. Absolutely smashed. <laughs> it was the most surreal, real experience. <laughs> and I think it just made us chuckle for the rest of the night <laughs> and pushed us through to the ferry. <laughs> yeah, it's a be there and I just wish I had a camera. Unbelievable. <laughs> what a race. Hi, this is Richard at Enigma. It's been great to be involved in the Pan Celtic. Real shame it's not going ahead this year, but um, very much looking forward to it starting up again next year. The highlight for me uh, was going over to the, the island checkpoint and uh, so meeting the organisers properly. I had already met Matt and Toby, but uh, meeting, meeting the other guys involved and uh, seeing the riders come through was, was just a great experience. Um, the other thing that this, that's been great for us is, is getting to know the other sponsors better. So um, Nathan and Ed at Restrap and Tom and Mark at Exposure. Um, it's just been, been really good talking to them about how they do things. We're all UK manufacturers and sharing ideas and things like that. And then collaborating on, on bike builds has been uh, a brilliant thing to do. So yeah, look forward to next year and uh, good luck everyone. Cheers. The Pan Celtic race for me was um, a fantastic idea. I knew that the route had been designed to take um, the races through Scotland, Ireland and Wales and along some of the ancient Celtic routes. And um, that for me was just like, way, yeah, I want some of this because uh, I like to keep in touch with the old ancestors. So it was like, great, sign up. Anyway, 
out of Olapool, down the Scottish coastline, one afternoon, sun was uh, in the sky and it was a lovely, quiet, still day. I'm cycling along and um, suddenly I become aware on the left of this um, hillock, this mound. And on the mound were these tall fir trees and in the fir trees were lots of crows and they were ah, ah, and I'm like, whoa, and I look at this inside and I'm going, that's really spooky. And there's something really spooky in there. I wouldn't like to be in there. And I cycled past it quite quickly. Anyway, I had to turn left, turned left down this road. And as I turned in, um, I started to get this sensation, these shivers up and down the spine. And I'm like, oh, Sheila, what's going on here? Cycling a bit further. And I get the feeling that I'm being watched. And it's like, oh, what's going on? And um, the best way I can describe it it's like you're traveling along the road but along the road also are other people or other things traveling and you're aware of them but you can't see them and um, it's just really spooky so i'm traveling along and i'm thinking oh what am i gonna do can i go yeah come on keep going sheila keep going courage courage cycling further along and i'm like okay and this feeling gets stronger and stronger and i come around a corner and there in front of me is a single stone monolith. And I'm like, whoa, this is old. This is really old. And the sensation of being watched is getting stronger. And I'm thinking, okay, I need to do something here. So anyway, from inside, I say, I'd like to have passage along this road. I'd like to share space with everyone along this road. I don't mean to cause harm. I don't want to stop. I'm just literally passing through please allow me safe passage through these lands. I don't know where it came from, but that's what I said. So I'm cycling further along and then I come down a, a dip and then I'm up and at the top of the dip is another large copse of fir trees that's really dark and I have to go into it. Well, I'm like, my heart starts to pound. I'm like, can I do this? Can I get through here? and I cycle into the woods and the feelings just like, oh, and I keep repeating to myself, thanking everybody for safe passage, thanking everybody for letting me share their, share their lands. And um, as I pass through and I pass out the other side, I stop the bike and I get off and I turn around and look, and it's really dark. And I'm like, okay, Sheila, time to get out of here, back on the bike, cycling. Pedal, 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 pedal. And in the distance, I can see a little bridge and a hawthorn tree. And my pace picks up and I cycle faster and faster and faster. And as I get to the bridge, I turn to the hawthorn tree and I say, hawthorn tree, I'd like to thank you for having allowed me to pass along this route and along this way. And I'd like to thank you for giving me and granting me access and safe passage. And as I go over the little bridge, the feelings just lift and disappear. And I'm like, whoa. When I get home, my good friend Sarah, she rings me up. She says, Sheila, I just want to ask, when you were traveling along that road in Scotland, uh, did anything happen to you? I said, Sarah, why do you ask? And she said, well, it's just really strange, but I got this feeling that you needed my support. So I was sending you good wishes. And I laughed at her. So when I get home, I do a bit of research. And um, it turns out that the road I was traveling along was called the Old King's Road. Now this is the route that uh, the burial procession would take when they were carrying all the old kings, the old Celtic kings, to their final resting place on the Isle of Iona. So no wonder it was feeling quite busy. So I just want to say, when you sign up for the Pan-Celtic race, you're not just out there to cycle and to ride your bike, you're out there to take part in a journey along some really ancient routes. So uh, be mindful, um, enjoy the moment, and if in doubt, just ask for safe passage. Hey guys, um, how's it going? Um, yeah, remembering the Pan Celtic Race 2019, uh, one of the funny moments that happened is when I was on top of the roof of the Welsh Embassy 
and um, Matt just was like giving full power, full gas and heat and then we were driving into this edge of this little little road that was a thing in, in Northern Ireland when we had to overtake Ryan Flynn and Reed Rodriguez because we wanted to go and arrive in a spot where we could take good pictures with the landscape. So uh, we had to give full gas and then I was on top of the roof. I don't know if Matt forgot it, um, probably he did. And uh, yeah, just give full gas on. And then um, I was taking a shot of uh, Ryan Flynn and Ruth Rodriguez there. And Ryan started saying, uh, Scotland, Scotland in that way. Um, and then just like full gas. And I was trying to hold myself as I could on top of uh, the Welsh embassy. Yes, nice. Nice memories, happy happy days, happy days. Probably you've seen the footage. Um, yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Nice landscape and everything. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's gonna be uh, on my mind, um, on my memories for all the time being. Take care. Hi there, Dan Cornwall, Rider 52. Uh, for me, Pan Celtic was a huge Roller coaster of emotions. Uh, myself and Matt Pritchard set off from Inverness as a pair, and unfortunately, as soon as like 50, 60 miles in, Matt had a mechanical at the side of the road that we just couldn't fix, and it was a huge low for us. You know, we planned for so many months to do this, and within 50 miles, it was all over in a way. Um, but after a calm conversation with Pete, uh, it was, you know, we, we sorted it out to go on as a, a solo rider. Um, so continued into Scotland, through Scotland, in over into Ireland. The scenery, the people you pass was amazing. Really got me through that difficult time. Um, and all this sleep deprivation, the exhaustion of it all uh, was crazy. Um, and then getting to the ferry from Ireland back over into Wales. Uh, it was great to, to meet up with other riders, especially with, with Duncan and Guy, who were a pair that we'd met the night before the race start. Um, so it was great to share stories of what we've been through and how much we were looking forward to the end of the race. Um, and yeah, it's an absolutely great race series and myself and Matt can't wait to come back and finish out what we started. Hi right, guys, Oli here. Um, the Pan Celtic race was my first sort of experience of uh, cycling anything more than about 15 miles to and from work. So it was quite a formative experience, but I got it done and my legs have just about recovered a year later. And uh, loads of funny memories for me, probably uh, getting into Glasgow, genuinely not being able to understand a word the shopkeeper was saying, and being woken up by sheep uh, in a field that I thought was empty um, when I was in Wales and it wasn't. And, and there was also a really good one in, in Scotland as well when uh, one of the hotels was fully booked. Um, this was at like three in the morning. Oh, you could check out our sister hotel a few miles down the road. Ended up being some kind of massive shooting lodge. Um, and I ended up, at, you know, for about 20 quid because it was last minute. Um, spending the night, or well, about four hours to be honest, in this sort of four poster bed mansion. Um, then tried to nick all the toiletries and realised I didn't have anywhere to put them. So those are probably my best memories. Paul Winder, cap number nine. Um, 60 minutes to describe, the, no, 60 seconds to describe the PCR. That's an impossible task in itself. Um, so apart from obviously personal journeys, which everyone had, mine was very personal to me. I think the thing that I took away from it is that the clan, as we call it, um, was incredibly welcoming. It's just a bunch of people who, who love to ride bikes, who made me feel as part of them and obviously I was a newbie and it was a first for me, I didn't know what to expect. But I think if I have to sum it up in one particular sentence, it was the best experience of my life, the best present I've ever given to myself. Um, it shut a few doors and it opened up new ones. I can't wait to be on the next one, wish I was there now, we'd be on, won't we be on day seven. Um, so hopefully coming near to the end um, and if anyone's watching this and is ever wondering where to start on their ultra journeys then I would not hesitate in recommending this.
do you think about about that uh, motor home? Well, I don't know. I didn't know what, didn't know what to think about. I thought it was an ambulance. Was it very loud or something or like here? Are you from this town? No, no, I'm not. No. no. You, your holidays? Yeah, yeah. And what do you think about like it's normal to see something like this? No, not normal. No, not not that normal. No, no.